As a great man once said, there is a fifth dimension, beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is in the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination, and it's the dimension I hope to introduce you to this evening in what is a very, very strange tale indeed. Well, Without further ado, sit back and relax with your favorite drink, my dear friends, because it's time to listen. Look, I'm an old fuck. All right, there's no getting around that. But I'd like to think I've got a head on my shoulders. I went to college, got a degree in some damn thing or another, came back home and started up a bookstore, had myself a nice family, raised two beautiful kids, then those kids went off and had kids of their own. And now, here you are. And would you look at that? Here I am, near the end of my life. No, no, don't whine. It's true. <laughs> I'm an old fuck after all. Now, listen, I was a kid, like you. Yeah, this is that kind of story. I turned 12 at the beginning of the millennium, back when cell phones were a pain in the ass, back when the internet was some dial-up garbage. I saw the information age develop right from the beginning, up to where it is now. I've lived a good life, and I'm still kicking, so I guess that means something. But I did this, all of this, in spite of what went down with this thing we called the creep. Yeah, it's also that kind of story. Now, this used to be a bog-standard suburban neighborhood. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Now we have graffiti in the alleyways, bars over the windows. Hell, we even have a subway hooked up. But back then, it was all white picket fences and minimal light pollution. The kind of shit that, nowadays, you'd think was some kind of alien planet straight out of a sci-fi movie. And when I say a bog-standard suburban neighborhood, I mean bog-standard suburban neighborhood. Like, so suburban that a minute or two's car ride would lead to grassy knolls and verdant farmland. We even had the creepy house at the end of the block, lived in by some old fuck. <laughs> the same kind of old fuck I am now. Lived alone, a widower, in his dilapidated shack of a legacy. White fences stripped of their paint by years of neglect. We called that old fuck the creep. Why? Well, it's simple. <laughs> he looked like a creep. Later on, I learned he probably wasn't so creepy after all. That he was just a sad old guy. But hell, we didn't know that when we were kids. We thought of him like he was some horrifying pedophile. We used to tell each other that he was hiding in our closets at night and jerking. Well, maybe you're a little young to be thinking about that. But your mother knows what she was getting you guys into when she left you alone with me for the day. So... We called him the Creep. One day, when we were twelve, my friends and I, Zach and Samantha, we called her Sam, we decided to go fuck with him. Ah, it was innocent enough. Just three twelve-year-olds screwing with some old fuck who, in our minds, probably deserved whatever he had coming to him. What we planned to do, though, wasn't innocent at all we decided to break into his house. Maybe hide in his closet for a change. Yeah, delusional little kids. So, I told my mum that I was staying over at Zach's. Zach told his mum he was staying over at my house. And Sam told her mum she was staying over at her friend Marcy's house. On the night of the break-in, 
we'd covered our asses pretty damn well. We'd also stocked up pretty damn well too. We figured that his hearing was pretty bad, so we could probably get away with having a few crinkly granola bars and fruit snacks while we snuck around his house. We also figured that he would be asleep early, so we had that on our side. It was seven o'clock when all three of us arrived at his house. It was early summer, so we had about a little less than an hour of daylight left. We parked ourselves around the side of his house and got to work formulating a plan. Well, I can't go in the front door. It won't even budge. So we gotta go in through the back door. Sam presented her keen observation with the authority of a cute girl who knew we both liked her. Zach and I nodded, but I was the first one who managed to speak. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so we're gonna go in through the back door. Then what? What if it's locked? Zack stole my lead, trying to ape the tone of a wise military advisor. <laughs> then we pick the lock, or find an alternate <laughs> manner of entry. Zack had a stutter, and he was ashamed of it, fully aware that girls don't often like guys that they pity. I took advantage of his misstep and struck a definitive blow. Yes, that sounds about right. Sam can provide the bobby pin, and I'll pick the lock. If that fails, which it won't, we can look for a... what was it? An alternate manner of entry. Sam giggled. It was on. I decided I would apologize to Zack later. So, do you see any lights on in his house? Sam asked, seeing that the sky was beginning to grow dark. No, said Zack. When I walked by earlier, there weren't any lights, and there doesn't look to be some on now. What are we gonna, like, do in there? I asked, attempting to engage Sam in a friendly conversation. Hmm, I don't know. I was thinking just, like, explore and hide. I'm real nervous. Well, d don't worry about that, Sam. I can help make you less safe. I, I, I mean, unsafe. Wait. <sighs> what he's saying, Sam, is that we can have each other's backs in there, so we don't need to be nervous. I figured I was really going to have to apologize to Zack after this one. I was putting on all the moves, <laughs> or as many moves as a 12-year-old boy can be said to have. Sure, I can have your back too, Davy. She said. Davy was my nickname back then. No, you can't call me that anymore. It's Gramps nowadays. We eventually grew bored of just standing around and chatting. And made our way into his backyard. Needing only to hop a wooden fence to get in. I helped Sam up anyway though. Just to score some more points. His backyard was filled with junk and probably hadn't seen a lawnmower since 1983. There were beach balls, old car parts, garden flamingos, ant hills, and other things all over the place. Oh, fucking gross, Zack said. For once, I didn't bother to contest his statement. It was goddamn gross. I think we all just stood there for a minute, staring up at his house. It looked way bigger than we'd first thought, looming above us like that, backed by the night sky. Can you see any lights on? Zack asked. Doesn't look like there are any. I think he's gone to bed. We walked up to the back door, and I tried to peer in. There was a curtain dangled limply over the window, so only a few spots of light could get in. But what I saw was much the same. Unwashed, nasty shit. The mud room I was looking into had worn out shoes on rusty racks that probably hadn't even been so much as glanced at in years. The floors were dusty. Not dirty. Dusty as in nobody had walked on them in a long time. I distinctly remember thinking 
that I didn't want to do this anymore. Despite this feeling, I called out, Looks empty! and asked Sam to hand me the bobby pin. She obliged, freeing her left bang from the pin's grip. <laughs> it was then that I realized I had no idea how the hell to pick a lock. Luckily, I didn't have to, because I jiggled the knob and the door creaked open. Ha! <sighs> Unlocked! I whispered, unable to tell from whom I was trying to hide my voice. Zack brushed past me and silently crept in. Sam followed, shooting me an anxious glance. I think I tried to signal that I had her back, but I probably looked just as terrified as she did. We had broken into the creep's house in the middle of the night. We were criminals now. I think, at that point... We realized that there was no real reason for us to do any of the things we were doing, and that in fact there were a million reasons to do the opposite. Now it was just a contest to see who would voice their own concern first. None of us did. It was pitch black in the house. I couldn't see anything. However, I could hear Sam's quick, short breaths beside me. Her hand tightly gripped my arm. Suddenly, there was a soft rattling in front of me. Then a click. Then another click. D -d -d Damn it, the, the, the fucking flashlight isn't working. Shake it a little. The same soft rattling ensued. Then a beam of light washed over the room we were standing in. It was the kitchen. Or what used to be a kitchen. Plates lay in dusty shards all over the floor. A few dirty dishes lay stacked in the sink, but they didn't seem to have been touched in years. The flashlight was focused on the area in front of us, but Zack was still partially illuminated. I could see him trembling in fear. I glanced over at Sam, or rather her outline in the dark. She was glancing behind us into the void, Worried, apparently, that there was something behind us. I looked in the direction she was facing as well, but of course I couldn't see anything. She turned her eyes away to look at me. Her mouth opened a bit, as if to say something, but then it closed again. Her hand was still tightly clamped onto my arm. I realized that the area around us was growing darker, so I looked over at Zack. He was walking forward to the other side of the kitchen, into the blackness of the door frame. Sam and I dashed to his side as quietly as we could, stepping on fragments of plate as we passed. Zack was squatting down, aiming his flashlight at the floor, to underneath the empty door frame. He was just staring. D did you guys see this? He whispered. I whispered back. Hey, Zack, maybe we should get out of here. Just fucking look, man. I turned my gaze to the spot of light cast by the flashlight. I didn't understand what he was trying to get me to notice. What are you talking about? The fucking sh sh shards. There was a semi-thick line of plate shards drawn across the floor. It looked like someone had done it intentionally. What happened? Sam squeaked. Zack looked up at her. It's supposed to be a signal, I think. If we step on the plates, it makes a sound. Then, he would know we're here. Like an alarm. But why would he do that? Why would he think someone would break into his house? And not just buy an alarm system? Zack didn't have an answer. He just silently stood up and carefully stepped over the line of plates. Sam and I did the same. We were now in the dining room, which was connected to the kitchen and the living room. Zack's beam swept over an ornate wooden table. It was dusty as well. The chairs lying each side of it hadn't been used in a while. 
I searched around in the dark and found a photo album lying on the floor. 1990 to 1993, I whispered to Sam, reading the dates on the cover. Hey, Zack, bring the light over here. He obliged. We leaned against the wall and looked at the photos. It was normal family stuff. A picture of a birthday party. A little boy blowing out a candle shaped like the number seven. A young woman and a young man leaning over the boy's shoulder, smiling. An old man standing in the corner, smiling. A little girl sitting across from the kid, not smiling. Probably jealous. Is that old guy the creep? Sam asked. Must be, I said. Looks like him anyway, just a little younger. In the next photo, the creep is standing in front of a statue, holding a baby in his arms. His face is beaming with pride. Is that the statue in front of the museum? Yeah, the art museum, I swallowed. Wondering if, maybe, I'd misjudged the creep. Maybe he wasn't a pedophile, just a white-bred family man. Then, we heard it. It was a faint, clicking sound. Almost a rattle. <laughs> Sam tensed up, grabbing my arm. What was that? I don't know. It came from above us. We stood there for a moment, in silence. The sound repeated, louder this time. <coughs> Sam let go of my arm and embraced me in a hug, holding me tight against her. She was terrified. I could tell. Zack swept the light over the room, watching both of the doorways of the adjoining rooms. I wanted to move, but I couldn't. I couldn't fucking move. It's not something you really understand until you have to understand it. My body was frozen. Asking me to move, to say anything, it would have been like asking me to start speaking in French. I wouldn't know how. Closer. Ever closer. This time, no more than a few rooms away. Stalking the hallway. Sam started sobbing. But she must have not been able to move either. I couldn't bring myself to move my head fully but I turned my eyes towards Zack. He was frozen as well. Sam was whispering something now, in between sobs. I realized it was the Hail Mary. In the living room now. The room next to the room we were in. Zack couldn't take it anymore. Let's go, he screamed, bolting towards the kitchen. We followed suit, kicking the shards of plate aside in the doorframe. Zack's light bobbed up and down, moving through the kitchen, and then, suddenly, a grey figure darted in front of us, blocking our path, and he was on all fours, and we all skidded to a stop then turned around and ran back into the dining room, screaming our heads off. The sound again. Shorter this time. K -k -k -k. Expectant. Right behind us. We ran into the dining room, then into the living room, and then into the hallway. Then Zack turned a corner into a side room, and there was a slam and a groan and we followed him around the corner. Sam slammed the door behind us and locked it. Zack was crumpled against a wall. The flashlight was flickering impotently at the base of a toilet. Sam rushed to Zack's side. 
Zach, are you all right? The sound was moving past us to the upstairs again. I hope to God that it, whatever it was, the creep, had lost us. But I doubted it. Lost interest, maybe. But I had a sinking feeling that it knew where we were. Zack groaned. What was that? The creep. Sam croaked, sounding like she was on the verge of tears. Or maybe she'd already cried so much that there was nothing left. Zack groped around for the flashlight. It was still flickering. Once he grabbed hold of it, it rattled and turned off, plunging us into complete darkness. I felt around for a light switch and flicked it on. For a moment, we were blinded by the light. Then, the haze cleared. We were in a bathroom, and the bathroom was covered in bones. Sam shrieked. She'd decided to rest on top of the toilet, making sure that the seat cover was down. Behind her, on top of the tank, was a skull. She shot to her feet and moved away from it, over to the counter. I looked down at my feet my toes inches away from a pelvis bone. It still had bits of shriveled flesh on it. I could see. My face froze up. My mouth started watering salty spit. I knelt in front of the bathtub and puked my guts out into it. The yellowish, chunky vomit splashed all over some half-eaten human legs. I started crying. There was nothing else to do. Zack grabbed his mouth and hurried over to the sink. He uncovered his mouth and emptied the contents of his stomach all over the faucet and down the drain. Fuck! He grumbled, leaning with both hands on the counter, still heaving. Sam started retching too, but she managed to hold it in. We just stood there amidst the bone and the bath in silence, taking deep breaths through our mouths so as not to catch a whiff of the vomitous stench. My stomach grumbled, begging for food. Though my appetite wasn't that big, my stomach needed something inside of it to replace what had been lost. I broke the silence after closing the shower curtain on the legs. <laughs> this is going to sound bad, but where are the snacks? You're... You're hungry. I mean, I don't want to be, but I kind of am, Zack. I already hadn't eaten dinner, and now I just puked up my lunch. I just want to forget about this shit for a second. Hey, hand over the snacks. Please. Ugh, I'm hungry too. Fuck, here you go. Zack opened his backpack and pulled out three bags of fruit gummies, handing one to me, one to Sam and keeping one for himself. Sam opened the bag and just stared at the gummies, a queer look washing over her face. She must not have been hungry, which was understandable. Like us, she was breathing through her mouth to not smell the puke, but the mere thought of vomit is enough to kill anyone's appetite. Not enough for Zachariah, though. We were starving. I wolfed mine down and asked Zack for another. He obliged, eating another just as voraciously as I'd done. Within minutes, we'd cleared out the entire stock of snacks. Gummies, granola bars, and even the saran wrap brownie Zack thought I'd stolen from him a few weeks back, but that had really just been lost at the bottom of the backpack. Sam still had that pale look on her face. We must have spent about ten minutes in the bathroom, just sitting there, before Sam wordlessly got up and opened the door, and then sprinted down the hallway. What is she... Zack asked. She hadn't run back the way we'd come. She'd run the opposite way, towards the creep. 
We could hear plates crunching from the direction she'd run, then her feet stamping up the stairs. She screamed. I could hear her feet scampering down the stairs, down the hallway, and suddenly she flew into the restroom, slamming the door behind her. She hastily locked it and turned her back to the door her face turning as white as someone with her skin tone could turn. She looked like she'd seen something that even someone who's lived for as long as I have shouldn't see. After a few seconds, she slouched against the door and slid to the floor, exhaling defeatedly. C -c 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 said the creep from upstairs. Zack looked at her strangely, and then asked, So, what did you see? I noticed he hadn't been stuttering. I placed my hand on his shoulder and said, Maybe now's not the time, Zack. Before I could react, he reared up and sucker punched me in the face. I stumbled backwards, seeing stars. And then he was yelling, this isn't about your stupid fucking crush on Sam anymore. We're trapped in a fucking house with a goddamn old fucking monster man on four legs and you're... He cut himself short and started smacking his forehead with his hand. Fuck. I was still reeling from his punch. I could feel a little trickle of blood leaking out of my nose through my fingers. Sam spoke up in a soft tone. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Zack asked sharply. Sorry for leaving. I just wanted to... I don't know. I don't know why I left. I felt like I was angry at something. Like, really angry. And I just... I just snapped. Is that the word for it? Like when you get so scared or angry, you just go crazy. Just for a second. Her head drooped down. She stared at the half-eaten pelvis on the floor in front of her for a minute, then took a deep breath and started up again. Anyway, I saw the creep. He was... He was eating something. Probably a person. I don't know. There was a little light, coming in through one of the windows at the end of the hallway. He was in the hallway upstairs, he was eating something like... like a dog. He was eating a dog? No. He was on his hands and knees eating this thing like he was a dog. He looked up and I could see him. He didn't look like a person anymore. He looked like my grandpa at his funeral. Like he was grey and dead. And he had this thing. She shuddered. This thing on his neck. I could see it a little in the light. When he was bending down to eat, it was all spiky and black and... There were all these wires, or hairs or something, going into his back and into the back of his neck. And then he looked up at me and... She choked up a bit. The light was shining onto his back, so I didn't see much, but... Her voice trailed away, and she looked up at us. There were tears running down her face, making her hair stick to her cheeks. But he was smiling. He looked like he was smiling. We've got to get the fuck out of here, Zack said. Yeah, no shit. I breathed out heavily. How did you get out? Why isn't he here now? I don't know. I panicked and I ran. Maybe he was too busy eating or whatever. I don't know. Okay. I don't know, Davy. He just looked up at me and he made that rattly clicking sound. And I just ran. It was stupid of me to even go up there. It was stupid of us to come here in the first place. It's okay. If he doesn't really care about us, we should be alright to leave, right? We can just leave. 
and call some adults and we'll be in a little bit of trouble, but the important part is we'll be... I struggle to get the next word out. Alive. We'll be alive. The word had a sick quality to it. I realised then that I'd never faced my mortality before that moment. I realised that, that this world, this life, it's something that can just go away. You don't have to be alive. It's not something that can be taken for granted. You can be dead like that in the time it takes to snap your fingers. This is something that I realised at your age, and I don't know if I'm right to tell you about it now. But it's true, and <clears throat> ignore my ramblings. All it is is just the useless philosophizing of an old fuck who should have died when he was twelve. Sam nodded. We just have to move quickly. Zack was standing against the wall, staring at his hand. Hey, Zack, I said. We gotta get the fuck out of here. We gotta get the fuck out of here. We gotta get the fuck out of here. We gotta... I grabbed him by the shoulders, and he looked up at me. His eyes were blank. His face had the same queer expression that had once occupied Sam's face. I'm sorry for punching you, Davy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do... I was just... I didn't... It's okay, man. I hugged him. Something we hadn't done since we were in elementary school. Let's just go. Sam turned towards the door and unlocked it. You guys remember the way, right? Just down the hallway, through the living room, through the kitchen, and through the mud room. Then we're in the backyard. Then we're safe. Got it? Got it, I said. Got it, said Zack. She twisted the knob and opened the door. And then, all hell broke loose. The creep was standing outside on all fours, dragging behind it a half-consumed corpse that it must have been about to dump in the tub. I could fully see it in the light of the bathroom, and suddenly I knew why Sam thought he was smiling. The creep had two black hooks poking through the skin near his lips, pulling the cheeks taut in a false, vile grin. The same kind of hooks were embedded in its eyelids, ensuring that it had total visibility through its bloodshot, yellowed eyes, framed by a face that seemed broken. The creep looked like his skull had been smashed up with a rock. It just stood there for a moment, staring. Then... Its throat pulsed horribly, like it was pushing something out of its esophagus. Its teeth clacked together, and it produced that horrible sound. C -c 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 we all screamed as it suddenly lunged forward, pinning Sam down and slashing her across the face, making that odious rattling click. I grabbed the first thing I could, which was the pelvis, and I swung at his head. The creep staggered for just long enough so that Sam could wriggle out from under him. Zack pounced onto the creep's back and started smashing its head on the ground. The creep skittered forward like a roach, ramming itself and Zack straight into the wall. Zack fell off its back, but I was on it again, bashing it with the pelvis. When my fingers brushed against the skin of its back, I realized that it was cold. The creep wasn't the man itself. He was just the host. He was dead. The real creep was the spiky thing on his back. I aimed for it, but the pelvis just bounced off the black shell like I was hitting it with a pool noodle. I turned around and saw Sam and Zack running away through the doorway of the restroom. I followed suit, hearing the creep skitter around, reorienting itself towards the hallway. I knew I couldn't realistically expect to kill it. The only thing to do was run. Down the hallway, through the living room, 
dining room kitchen, slamming into walls and corners this way and that, hearing it flit around behind me, rattling and croaking. An outstretched hand brushed my back as I ran into the mudroom. And then I was in the backyard. Sam and Zack were just ahead of me, clambering over the fence in the moonlight. I followed quickly, sensing the creep close behind. I didn't realize it could leave the house, but there was no time to think about that. Zack held out his hand to Sam, pulling her over, hoisting her up, and then she was over. Zack extended his hand out to me, screaming at me to go, just go, hurry up, come on. I grabbed his hand and he pulled me up. Then the creep seized my leg pulling at me with the strength of something that didn't care about whether or not it pulled a muscle, that didn't care about the body it inhabited. Zack struggled against it for a moment, pulling me upwards, but the creep was stronger, wrenching both Zack and I over to the wrong side of the fence. I punched at the creep's arm, but it just kept holding on to me. I tried to kick at its face with my other leg, but it used its other arm to hold that one down. I was punching at its face, scratching its eyes, but it just kept coming, inching its bruised limbs up my torso, trying to get at my face. Suddenly, I heard a yell, like a crazed war cry. The creep jerked downwards towards me, making a sort of gasp, and then fell onto me. With the final ounce of my strength, I pushed it off and looked up. Zack was standing over the creep, trying to catch his breath. The jagged wire foot of a garden flamingo was jutting out of the creep's head. He held out his hand and pulled me to my feet. Oh, let's get the fuck out of here, Davy. Yes, let's. We climbed over the fence and plopped onto the soft grass below. Sam was waiting for us on the other side, sitting down in the grass against the wall of the house, clutching her face. It's dead, Zack said. He killed it, I said, almost laughing with glee. He killed it with a fucking flamingo. Sam wasn't moving much, sitting down in the grass against the wall of the house. She was holding her face, still. Sam, are you okay? She glanced over at us and uncovered her face. Three hideous gashes ran from her ear to her chin. I remembered then that the creep had slashed her. Shit, I said, exhaling sharply. We need to get you to a doctor. Sam got up and started walking. She was silent. Hey, you're going to be okay, Zack said. It's just a scratch. It wasn't just a scratch, and we all knew it. We marched into the front yard of the house, nearing the sidewalk. What happened next, I'm not entirely sure, but I'll try to explain it. That thing, the creep, it popped out of the fucking grass. Now, I've thought a lot about this, and here's how I figure it. The creep is a creature that latches onto organisms and takes control of their nervous system. The host is dead, but the creep still uses it, like a puppet. When Zack stabbed the old man through his head, it severed some of the connections that the creep had to the old man's brain. But that alone doesn't kill the creep. No. All the creep has to do is pop off and find a new host. The creep found a new host. Sam. It flung itself out of the grass, landing squarely on her neck. And I saw the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. She was facing away from us when it grabbed on. 
The wires that it used to latch onto her nerve slapped around wildly for a moment, then slipped into her skin and wriggled like hair-thin worms down her spine. I could see the black, spiky, chitinous mass shudder in what I think must have been pleasure as she started to scream. She frantically turned around, facing us, her eyes wide with fear. She wasn't just screaming the scream of someone who was in pain. She was screaming the scream of someone who had just been flooded with something terrible, something sick and evil. More than fear. The black tendrils of the creep jabbed into her eyelids, then slid down to the corners of her eyes, tearing them apart. Her eyeballs rolled into the back of her head. Then two more hooks shot across her cheeks. On the left side, they grabbed the side of her mouth. On the right, they grabbed onto one of the gashes that it had made earlier. The hooks pulled her skin taut, ripping the right side of her face off and tearing her mouth open on the left, into a half grin. Her cheek flapped loose like a fucking pancake as the hooks readjusted grabbing onto the thin ring of skin, what was left of her lips. They tore that apart and her eyes rolled back into place, filled with blood, weeping blood, widened and in something that had once been fear and was now wrathful depravity. Her throat pulsed and her teeth clattered together. We could see it happening. Her teeth, pearly white, clicking through the tatters of her face, trying to make the proper sound, gurgling as it took hold. She, it, the creep, looked at both of us for a moment. It cocked its head to one side, Sizing us up through its pair, oh, sizing us up through this new pair of eyes. Then, by some miracle, or by some curse, it decided to let us live, bounding away towards the backyard on all fours, like a dog. It scaled the fence like an insect, jerkily but with an almost expert level of dexterity. And then, she was gone. They never found her body. Zack was collapsed in a heap on the ground, screaming. He never stopped screaming, not until the day he died. The people who heard his screams, they called the police, the ambulance, and the fire department, everything. The paramedics had to subdue him with morphine when they got him there. After he passed away, no, after he died, because people like he and I don't go out peacefully, won't just pass away. After he died, decades later, his mother told me that the second he woke up, he just kept screaming. Even after his throat went hoarse, even after his throat went raw, they kept him doped up and everything, but it didn't matter. What happened to me? Well, after I saw the creep, I went quiet for a while. I didn't say anything for years. Not a word to anyone. When I finally spoke, I wouldn't talk about what happened that night. I refused. Not because I was scared. Because I couldn't remember. But last night, I remembered. I woke up in a cold sweat and I remembered. I remembered what had happened that night. I remembered how, after she disappeared over the fence, a red glow washed over the house. Washed over Zack and I. Washed over us and moved along, moving towards the backyard. A red light from the sky, bathing us in it, washing us clean. And then I remembered how it hovered, only for a moment 
over the backyard. How her body, how the creep, rose through the sky, above the house, up, up, up and up. Last night, I remember that I never had kids, that I never had grandkids, that I never went to college, never opened that bookstore, that I deluded myself into thinking that I was something, that I had something, when in fact, I was nothing. Nothing because of myself, because of the creep, because of Zack, and because of Sam. And someday, maybe tonight, maybe my sudden remembrance is a sign. Maybe tomorrow, maybe a decade from now, <laughs> maybe never. Maybe someday, it'll come back for me, the creep. Bearing the form of a twelve-year-old girl with half a face. Maybe she'll hold out a hand and take me with her up into the red light, into the sky, into something I'll never understand. Okay, everybody, I hope you didn't mind me uh, stealing the words of Rod Serling from the Twilight Zone at the beginning there. <laughs> but it seemed quite fitting uh, as an introduction to this story. Quite a crazy one, I think you'll admit. Um, certainly piqued my interest anyway. And I uh, thought it was a good thing to read to you all on this Friday evening. Seeing as you have nothing better to do than spend it with me. Well, that's it for this week. As ever, I'll be back again on Monday. And maybe, just maybe, I'll continue my uh, Greatest Hits collection this Sunday evening, if I can get it together or not. But anyway, enough of me for now. One thing I can guarantee is that I'll be back again real soon. But for now, bye-bye.